This all happened 70 years ago. 70 years ago. Doesn't she look good? February of 1942. <laughs> President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066. I've got it right up here on my shirt. This is a shirt that was designed by an artist who is also in one of those camps. And below it is the list of all of the names of the camps. Um, uh, when he signed EO 9066, it didn't, the uh, executive order didn't state that uh, Japanese were to go to camp or were to be removed from the West Coast, but he put General John, uh, General John, uh, General John DeWitt, I believe his name was, uh, who was the military commander of the West Coast Defense um, and West Coast Defense. And I want to give you a quote. I'm going to start with this quote: "A Jap is a Jap, and it makes no difference whether citizen or not." I'm not worried about the Germans or Italians, but we will worry about the Japs until they are wiped off the face of this earth. And that is the reason why when he became in charge of the, uh, uh, of the uh, carrying out of Executive Order 9066, he declared that all of the Japanese on the West Coast uh, for 500 miles in, inland and through Oregon and Washington and Arizona were to be moved to inland. Um, Manzanar would, didn't quite fit that uh, location, but Manzanar, and incidentally, in your program, Manzanar, if you will take a pen right now, the spelling is M-A-N-Z-A-N-A-R. Uh, I was in education and very uh, adamant about correct spelling, so uh, anyway, wow. <laughs> Manzanar. And it's a Spanish word for apple orchard. Um, Manzanar uh, was one of the first uh, camps set up, and it was when you order 120,000 people to leave the West Coast, where do you put them? You build up hastily, uh, uh, build assembly centers uh, in racetracks. So some of them were in Santa Anita, mm -hmm. Tanferan up north in San Francisco area, Puyallup in Washington, D.C., Washington, state of Washington, and uh, some of the fairgrounds. Um, and they, they were hastily built barracks in addition to people living in horse stalls. And in, for the case of Santa Anita, it was 18,000 people that st was living there. We happened to go to Manzanar uh, early on and uh, because, uh, because of circumstances with my family. But we were there beginning of April, so we took a train and then we were let off at Lone Pine and uh, we then went to Manzanar on an army transport truck, and it was all guarded. Manzanar was uh, about a mile square. It's, it is about 225 miles from Los Angeles. Um, it housed 10,000 of us. Uh, barracks were Army-style barracks built with uh, the Army way, and so they were uh, co covered in tar paper. Uh, each barrack was 100 feet long and divided into four units of 20 by 25. And the, each unit at the very beginning housed two families. So in this 20 by 25 room, uh, families of up to eight, two families of up to eight people each stayed in the, in the room until enough barracks were built. In other words, they kept moving people in right away after the executive order and the um, uh, was placed and the uh, rules and notice for what we could take, how we were supposed to go, this all had to be planned. And we were told in a notice that was posted on uh, 
telephone poles and uh, bulletin boards, what we could carry, uh, what we should take with us. Now remember, most of us, and including my parents and my grandparent, my, my grandparent was arrested, my grandfather was arrested on December 7th for not doing anything, just uh, but just because he was a Japanese alien. Uh, we were to take our uh, towels and sheets, but not mattresses, enough for every member of, of our family, clothes, our toiletries, and whatever other personal things that we needed. And, and uh, well, in the case of women, I imagine it would have been makeup, but for children, it should have been toys. We were only allowed to carry, what, take what we could carry, and so that did not include toys. And I was seven years old at that time. So my, my actual program, I uh, titled, Why Was I a Child, Denied My Civil Liberties, and Put Into a Concentration Camp. And as I explained, and I just gave a talk yesterday to a group of about 40 or 50 people. Um, my talk is rather long, but while we were in Manzanar, Ansel Adams, uh, the noted landscape photographer, wanted something to do. He was a friend of the director, and so the director told him that he could come to the camp and photograph people doing different things, being active and living their lives. And this was like a year after, a year and a half after we had all gone to camp. So we had entered camp in April 2nd of 1942, and by uh, October of 43 is when Ansel Adams came. And our family, fortunately, was selected to be photographed by him. And so uh, I didn't realize the, the uh, importance of that because I was kind of an obstinate kid. He would tell me to pose one way and I would say, I don't want to do it that way. I want to face the camera. And he'd say, no, you, you do as I say. And so I had to do as he said. But I have some copies of some photographs that uh, he took and also the book that he um, published. He published the book in 1944, but it was not well received by the public. And so the original uh, published publications were either, either destroyed or I don't know what, we don't know what happened to them. But a few of them were saved at, in the uh, National Archives. And when I went there in 1981 and I wanted to buy a copy um, I didn't know that they were on sale, but they were on sale for $250 each, and originally they sold for $1, so that was the price of a rare book. Anyway, it was reprinted in 2001 in time for the Manzanar National Historic Site and the Interpretive Center to open. This was uh, under the auspices of the National Park Service, and so uh, the publisher, Spotted Dog Press, uh, who is located in Bishop, decided that she would reprint the book. And, and she went to the archives in Washington and got all of the <laughs> negatives and then made this really great book. It uh, has a nice hard cover to it with a colorful jacket and a quality paper on which the photographs are printed. And this is a picture of my mother. She looks younger than you. Well, she was younger than me at that time. <laughs> a lot younger. <laughs> I think she was, uh, she, this was 1943, so she was uh, probably 34 or 35. And then there's me and my sister. My sister has her mouth closed. And, but she, that, there's a reason for that. 
That's right. In this picture, this is the picture that he also took, she's smiling. And if you look at it, you see that there's something missing, her tooth. Well, my mother thought it was a terrible, absolute rudeness to have smile with your missing tooth showing. And so she made her close her mouth. And would you believe Ansel Adams honored her request to, to print the picture without the uh, tooth showing. Anyway, he, he did a lot of the, uh, he, he did all of the photographs and he wrote all of the text. And this is a book that it's still available mainly because uh, it's available in the museums, um, the Japanese American National Museum in Los Angeles and also at Manzanar in, at the Interpretive Center. But this is a picture that he took of the agricultural fields. And you notice that the mountains are always in good focus. Um, there's another picture that he took that's, um, I, and I don't know if I could find it. Oh, here, here it is. This is, he was not allowed to take uh, photographs of the barbed wire fence and the guard towers. So he stood up on the guard tower, way up high, and took that photograph. And you could see here's the uh, desert uh, brush, and here are the living bar quarter, the barracks, and on this side is the fire breaks. And that's where uh, the uh, residents built athletic fields. There was a baseball diamond, a football practice field, a basketball court, and volleyball courts. But there is Mount Williamson, beautiful Mount Williamson in the background, and it's very clear. Anyway, um, the other iconic photograph you see is of the monument this is the monument that was built to, uh, at, the, at the cemetery. And it's, it uh, has some Japanese characters. I think it's called Soul Consoling Tower. But every year, our committee, Manzanar Committee, organizes the pilgrimage. And this year, I need somebody to help me organize this stuff. This year, our pilgrimage is on Saturday, April 27th. Uh, and of course, you have to travel up to Manzanar. And Manzanar is about 225 miles up Highway 395. Uh, it's like on your way to Mammoth, uh, Lake Tahoe, Bishop, and uh, fishing at Lake Crawley. And in fact, this is the opening day for fishing, so if some of you are fishermen, you can uh, take the trip up there. Uh, I also wanted to talk. Um, I do have some cards back there. This is uh, one of the cards. There are two different cards. They're both the same. They have the same information. But this one has the monument and there's another one that has the wall of all of the uh, people who were incarcerated at Manzanar. Um, in, in fact, as uh, Tehani was saying, internment, we try, we have been trying for the past several years to eliminate euphemisms that have been, re have been used to refer to the camp and to the people who were in camp like they say, internment. Internment is a camp for aliens during time of war. And uh, so if, uh, like in the instance where my father, my grandfather was arrested, he was an alien. He was taken to, uh, actually he was taken to a federal prison camp, uh, Missoula, Montana. Imagine he was uh, like 60 years old and, and uh, he hadn't done anything wrong, and here he was in prison. Um, I have, that's this, and this card will tell you how to get there. It's, uh, it shows you a map on the back side. Okay, and then um, 
There are a few of these uh, booklets. And they talk, tell you about Manzanar. And the interesting thing about this is they have a map, the layout of the camp up there. And, and pointing out to the different, uh, different uh, items, different uh, points of interest. And there was a hospital there. My aunt and uncle were doctors, and so they uh, were asked to go and set up uh, the hospital at Manzanar. And they left at the end of March, and our family just wanted to stay together, so we, we went in April. And then there you see how a barrack was divided, and then there's some photographs. But if, if you're really interested, there's only about two or three of these. So um, if you want it, if you want one of these, you have to take a trip to Manzanar. <laughs> and the other thing is I, I also joined the Heart Mountain Foundation. And I told the people there that if they sent me flyers, I would distribute them to whoever I talked to. And so I do have some Heart Mountain uh, Camp Flyers, uh, they have just uh, newly uh, set up their interpretive center. And Heart Mountain is located in Wyoming, right close to the Jackson and the Tetons. Actually, it's near Cody and Powell, if any of you know Wyoming. But if you ever go and take a trip up there, maybe you'd like to go and see Heart Mountain. Uh, it's, a, it's also a, a place where there was a lot of, what do you call it, unrest, because people uh, objected to being drafted when they were imprisoned and, and uh, their civil liberties were taken away from them. And so um, uh, many of them, there were about 150 of them that said, uh, once we are, once we are uh, granted our civil liberties, we will be willing to go. So um, we call them resistors of conscience. Okay. The other, I have a few other photographs that Ansel Adams took of our family. I don't know if you're interested. Um, I don't have a, a PowerPoint on this. I, so anyway. These are some of the, this is a, a picture of, uh, that we had to pose. We're supposedly looking for clothes. I think that's, no, this is a toy loan center. This is uh, the toys, toy loan center. And uh, it's a jigsaw puzzle of the world that we're, or of the US. No, jigsaw map of the world that we're looking at. Really interested in. My sister looks really bored. And this is one where we're looking at clothes. Uh, this is one where we're in front of our unit. Um, And this is one in front of uh, a park. It's called Merritt Park. This park was built by uh, one of the uh, incarcerees. We call them incarcerees. It's kind of an odd word to use, but uh, we say we can't really refer to people as prisoners. We didn't commit any crimes, and you know, a prisoner assumes that you committed a crime, and uh, in in some cases, anyway, and. Uh, uh, and uh, we're not internees because we were citizens. And so uh, he took more pictures, but uh, I, I found some of them uh, at the Eastern California Museum in Independence, but I don't, I don't know how I could get copies of them. And, I'm, I'm, and I think at my age now, I may be I'm not going to collect any more things because I have senioritis where I've got hoarded a bunch of stuff and I've got a house full of things I need to get rid of. 
I live in a two-story, four-bedroom house by myself, and each room is filled with stuff. <laughs> so anyway, that is what happened 70 years ago to Japanese Americans, and mostly living in California. And um, I also am going to tell the story, but the full length version with the historical background at Cal State Long Beach. The senior center there is called Ali Institute, and it's gonna be on March 9th at one o'clock. So if any of you are interested in hearing the whole one hour <laughs> with the PowerPoint and the, um, the speech about the history, uh, the, and I call, I say it's legalized discrimination because all along the way, uh, laws were passed mainly to prevent the Japanese from immigration, lo owning land, and, uh, and, and citizenship. And so that's it. I was, I was selected to be on the cover, but it's just my face. It's just your face. <laughs> and I, st I have a story just about the, the dresses, cover. too, but that's, you know, I, I did write on the back flyleaf. My father is not pictured in the book. He um, requested permission for a work furlough to go pick potatoes in Idaho. And um, so um, that's what he did. And he was not there for the picture. But he did send us the dresses. He bought two new dresses. And in fact, in yesterday's talk, one of the women told me, asked me if my last name was Nakamura, and that's my maiden name. And she said, your mother was my PE teacher. My mother was a PE teacher in camp because both my parents were graduates of university. My father went to University of California, Berkeley, as an architect major, and my mother was a PE major from USC. Boo. I, I'm a UCLA graduate. 